Dan Williams, Survive Outdoors, Wilderness Medicine. We're going to uh, talk today about proper application of tourniquets. We're going to compare the, uh, the cat tourniquet, the combat application tourniquet that everybody knows about. It's probably on every ambulance rig there is. And we actually have these at the clinic. Not really sure why, I've never used one at a clinic in 40 years, but hey, we got them. We also have the, um, this is the new SAM splint, and we're gonna go through both of those, talk about the prices, should you carry it? If so, which one would you or should you carry? Before we do that, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a synopsis of what you can look forward to. We're gonna be doing tons of stuff on spiders, we have not addressed mosquitoes. We have not dove deep into Zika. And is Zika still around? We haven't dove into uh, West Nile, lightning strikes, scorpions. We haven't done any of that. So we're gonna do some deep dive on a lot of those uh, bugs and critters. So we're gonna be addressing all those different topics. So if you haven't subscribed, this is the time to do it. You're gonna be notified when all of those are gonna be coming up in the future. All right. Tourniquets. I have one in my vehicle. I usually do not carry one in my backpack because there are other ways to stop bleeding besides using uh, one of these tourniquets. And I understand, I mean, I got all my paramedic buddies out there telling me that, yeah, but you never know, you know, something could happen and it could. But somewhere along the line, you're going to have to draw a line in terms of how much are you going to carry in the backcountry. You know, you really need to figure that out. And if you have some other mechanisms to stop the bleeding, um, then definitely you could go to those. I mean, these do work really, really well. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the quick clot over the counter stuff that you can buy for small wounds. For large wounds, traumatic wounds, yes, it works pretty good. But please don't use that for small wounds. It makes my life miserable at the clinic. Okay, <clears throat> so. This is the well-known cat tourniquet. Um, it's pretty simple to use. You're going to put this over, usually you wanna put this about anywhere, they say three to four, I like four to six inches above the wound, the major bleed. You're going to take this and you're going to, you know, let's get it all on round for, they got it big enough for a massive guy's thigh, that's for sure. So you take that, you Velcro that down. This is the timestamp, take that. And then what you do is you take this little plastic wheel and you turn that, and let me tell you, it gets tight. Get that out of the way. Turn this sucker and it falls into this butterfly clips. And then write the time when that's on there. And already, I mean, it's clearly stopping circulation. So, now I have a video on how long you should leave these on, and we've talked about that before you get tissue death, and that can be anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes max. However, again, you know, I have individuals out there that take this black and white, and you cannot do medicine in black and white. You cannot, oh, 45 minutes, we've got to take that off. You know, William said on Survive Outdoors, no. That's absolutely not the way it works, boys and girls. It doesn't work that way. If you have a major bleed <clears throat> and you have to weigh the situation, you can release it a little bit, but then you need to put that back on and keep it tight. Now, <clears throat> remember a little segue here. Tourniquets do not ever, ever put a tourniquet on a snake bite. They do not work. You're gonna have more damage. Do not use them on a snake bite. So this will run you about $30 for the cat tourniquet. And then a couple years ago, the great Sam Splint Company, I love their products, they felt, I guess, they had to jump into the uh, market of tourniquets. And this is actually, it's nice. It, it is a <clears throat> very similar. The difference is you're going to take this and you're going to crank this down and you'll hear a click. And you see those two little knobs in there, it clicks in there, and that's telling you that it is definitely tight. That's where they want it, with that initial. That's your first step, is the Velcro. Then you take, the same way, you take your 
little handle there and you turn that until it gets into the and then you put it into this butterfly clip and then it also has a place for your timestamp so you can mark it. So this one runs about 35. So what's the main difference of these two tourniquets? One is that that little click kind of tells you when to stop and when then you can start cranking that down. The purpose is about $35, $5 more. <clears throat> Cat tourniquet has been around a long time. It's still used on a lot of rigs. So should you carry it in your backpack? I mean, you can. Want some paracord? You can. It is, um, it's very lightweight. <clears throat> small you can really I don't know what is it, about crunch this up maybe five inches and it's extremely light but like I said in 40 years I've never used one in a clinic thank God um, I've used one on a um, I came up on an MVA motor vehicle accident and I used one gone lost it but uh, the paramedics took it with them obviously but other than that I never have used one so, those are the two tourniquets. I favor the simplicity of the cat, um, and it's cheaper. So, any questions, throw them down below. Keep your eyes on the rise and your face in the wind.